Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, you probably remember the reform of the English NHS back in 2012, a reorganisation that got rather little scrutiny at first. Then there was disquiet, which then turned to large-scale discontent, and then some redrawing of the plans. Well, are we heading down a similar path now with the reform of schools in England? The government's plan, announced in the budget, in fact, is to take schools out of local authority control by turning them all into academies. It's had some attention, but given the magnitude of the change, it's not had much. Yesterday, the Commons debated it at Labour's instigation, and there was clearly some disquiet among Tory backbenchers. They are an outstanding school in every sense of the word. They said to me they would not want to become an academy. And what I fundamentally struggle with is a very simple point, that I should go to them and say, despite the fact that your school is outstanding, that all of your staff are working brilliantly and delivering fantastic education, that we now are going to force you to become an academy. Current evidence does not allow us to draw conclusions on whether academies in themselves are a positive force for change. I've got many questions about this. If I were to sum up the concerns expressed to me by teachers locally, it would be confusion, I think, as to why something that is so obviously not broken needs fixing. Well, the man who's set in train many, many reforms uh, in his Education Reform Act 1988 was Kenneth Baker. Now, Lord Baker, he created GCSEs, the National Curriculum, City Technology, college, City Technology Colleges and earlier vintages of academies. And he's with us now. Very good evening to good you. Good evening to you. Um, do you support making all schools academies? Well, I support academies because I started them, as you said, with the City Technology Colleges back in the 1980s. But it had to start in a gentle way because I had to find teams of people to run those schools. Uh, but head there's teachers, huge... head teachers who could, who, who never had to employ people before, who never had a capital budget, they become managers. So yeah, there's a huge difference, isn't there, between the things you started up, which were carefully, you know, calculated schools, designed and mm. organised, and new ways of doing things. And just taking every school in the country and saying, you're now an yeah. academy, you're on well, your own, you're well, not in this. Well, the history of, since I left was that uh, by 2009, when the coalition started, there were about 200 academies. There are now 4,700. A huge change, absolutely huge change, which has happened naturally, quite naturally, and I think that's the best way to proceed, quite frankly. Right, rather than forcing it. Uh, yes. Uh, if one wants to get to the stage of having virtually them all out, well, coax them along that road. Now, there are some authorities, like Gloucester, for example, where all the schools are academies. And I think there's a better in, I think it's Southwark. But let them do it at the, uh, their pace rather than anything else would be the best way so to do it. So the government are probably pushing it a little faster or too, f too yes. fast or too hard for yes, your life. Yes, because I think you can, with a well-managed uh, academy, you can get better results. It's really well-managed. But, uh, you know, not everyone is well-managed, right. quite frankly. And now this is, gets at a crucial point, because, in fact, the idea is to put them into groups. I'm not, I, I, ha I hate even using these acronyms. MATS, right? Multi-Academy Multi Trusts. Yes, you've got that yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> and these are, what, 10 or 15 each or yes, that, more? Yes, that's that sort of size. And several exist at the moment. But if they're going to do all the schools, they will need something like about 2,000 multi-Academy Trusts. Right. And there aren't all that number anything like that number. And you, you're and running I, something what, what like one of these. You're running oh, yes. UTCs, that, that's a trust, you've got uh, 40 schools. I, I'm running uh, new technology colleges, uh, university technical colleges, and these are very successful. They're individual schools, they take youngsters from 14 to 18, they, uh, they have a very practical course, right, they, but my the question two days is, of the week they're making things. My question is, how easy is it to build a chain like the one you're running, how easy is it to build a good chain and can you do that in the course of, say, three well, years? Well, one, one of the best mats is Phil Harris. He's got 38 schools. He started when I was Secretary of State 30 years ago. And it took him all that time to do it. Wow. And it takes a so long not, time no way they're going to, to build up. To build up a, a to really good mat takes time. You have to have school managers, ex-heads, and you also have to have people who understand the right. arcane world of school finance. Now, let's just talk about the curriculum, because you introduced the national curriculum. Yeah. Academies don't have to do it in the normal way. So no. is this just, un, just unravelling the national curriculum? Well, no, I think the national curriculum... If I was now dealing the cards, 
which I'm not, I would actually now stop the national curriculum at 14 and at 14 have a series of technical colleges. This is what Austria, Austria does and has the lowest level of youth unemployment. And in a way, the colleges I'm starting are rather fits into that pattern because they're 14 to 18. Youngsters at 14 know where their interests lie. And our youngsters, therefore, for two days a week, make things with their no, hands. But so, I'm listening to you. What is so interesting, and you've been brutally banging on about this for, for, for decades, what is so interesting is the whole thrust is to get book learning back into classrooms, isn't yes. it? If that's, what, that, that's what conservative educators believe. I think that it? is a huge mistake. You need a knowledge economy, but that is in itself not enough. You have to have practical uh, application of knowledge. Take an example. If there's a youngster in one of our colleges making the chassis of a car and rounded bonnets and all of that, doing that, he'll understand the importance of trigonometry. Absolutely there, not just in book learning. I believe in learning by doing as well as studying. And You're a this... radical. You're an educational radical. Well, I think, uh, yes, you can call me that, but I think I'm effective because our heads, our heads in each uh, UTC has a target. When they have students leaving at 16 or 18, no one should join the ranks of the unemployed. And we are meeting that. Our youngsters become apprentices, they get jobs, or they get to universities. I mean, there are, so other, there, I mean, there are other things I think you, you disagree with the government on in this programme. Notably, by taking out the LEAs, which you're comfortable with, you don't have local accountability. So suddenly everyone's saying, well, now we have to reinvent some local accountability. Now, well, have they cracked that nut? Because you've removed well, it and you're trying to... Well, well some, of the, some of the uh, academies do have local accountability. They're very close to their communities. Our colleges are very close to their communities. We have ones in Sheffield. Sheffield now wants a second. We have one in Coventry. They want another one in Solihull. And this comes from the requirements of the local community. Um, but those local ones often have parents as governors, don't they? Yes, I'm and they're taking that out. I mean, I, they're saying no, we don't need parents as governors. What's I'm going fully on? in favour of keeping parent governors. Uh, uh, it sounds we, like you're we, just, you're just we have parent completely governors. at odds with them on almost every well, aspect no, of no, the The general thrust is right, but uh, I think on parent governors, parent governors are very useful people. They're, they are the local contact. They take an interest with their children in the school, and uh, we have parent governors on our university technical colleges. Together, but we also have business people. You see, we have business, local business people coming in and teaching the youngsters on projects. And so, therefore, our youngsters and get used to teamwork, problem solving. They become employable. We make them work ready. Kenneth Baker, lovely to talk to you. Thanks. Nice to talk to you.